Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. I have made it no secret over the years that one of my more favorite genres of games are the space sim. Games like Free Space 2, Freelancer, and Starlancer, along with the Wing Commander series. So when I came across the game called Rebel Galaxy, I felt myself actually growing excited. Granted, I was made aware of its presence due to an issue with their game's assets being used in someone else's game that is currently in development, but I was anxious to finish my report on the situation so I could take this game out for a real spin. Now, I do realize that this first impressions review is over a week late due to other circumstances, and several of you have been wondering what this game was as I've been using footage of it for a few videos. But here at long last, please allow me to introduce you to Rebel Galaxy, an open-world sci-fi game by Double Damage Games. Rebel Galaxy is an open-world adventure that has you play as a pilot who received a message from your Aunt Juno. The game starts you off with a quest to track her down, and in the doing so, you're introduced to the overall game itself through a series of well-thought-out and fairly standard tutorial missions. And as with most open-world environments, you're free and clear to do whatever you want in between story missions. You can go mining, run cargo, or take side missions for extra funds to be able to purchase different ships to match your playstyle and upgrade them. The system is surprisingly robust, and there are enough random encounters that makes the game feel alive to a certain extent. At first, I had thought the game was far more linear than it turned out to be. Even though the ship is limited to a two-dimensional plane of flight, the developers made good use of their intended mechanics, and careful thought was given to a wide variety of areas. There is a commerce economy in place which will allow you to trade goods between stations. In addition to that, several stations have mission boards that will allow you to pick up side contracts for extra money and influence. And if you don't feel comfortable taking on assignments alone, you have the option to hire a mercenary to tag along with you. The game does feel like a bit of an homage to Free Space and Firefly, having clear influence from both the open world space sim and the futuristic Wild West television series that Fox Television was insane to cancel, and as a confirmed brown coat, I can say with absolute certainty that you cannot stop the signal. Now, bear in mind, this is a first impression after only about seven hours of gameplay, but as I said, this game is far more robust than I'd first anticipated. The story is serviceable enough as you're on a quest to find your missing aunt. In the doing so, you meet a wide variety of humans and aliens that were all rendered with a good amount of talent involved. The voice acting is also well done, even though the majority of it seems to be in a sort of faux alien language. Now, in this game, much like the old Microsoft game Free Space, you have the capability to do a wide variety of tasks. With multiple ship types and multiple methods of earning income in an open-world environment, the sector is your oyster. You can go mining for materials to sell via the commerce menu on most stations. In addition, you can even become an open trader, buying and selling goods and ferrying them from point to point. You can also take on missions on various stations that range from combat missions to simple intelligence gathering. You can also trade in contraband materials if you so choose, even to the point of becoming a pirate yourself if you would want to travel down that path. Now, In addition, the game's mechanics are simple yet serviceable. I found them to be fairly intuitive overall, and the only real difficulty I've found with the controls is when running the broadside cannons I would sometimes encounter a ship that was capable of moving over the top or underneath my ship while I myself was locked onto the game's 2D plane of movement. I feel this game would have worked better with a 3-axis range of motion, which would better serve a space-based game of this nature. Still, that's a fairly minor complaint in the overall scheme of things, and other than that small complaint, the gameplay and controls seem to be well thought out and easily manageable. Now, the graphics of the game are also well done, especially considering the price tag involved. I have seen more expensive games with far less by way of graphics than what we were presented with here. The game shows an amount of polish that really speaks well of the developer's abilities and they should be commended for their efforts. Now, as far as stability goes and the remainder of the mechanics, I thought the game was extremely stable. No frame rate drops or glitches to be found on my playthrough so far. In addition, the options menu does contain a fair amount of diversity to its settings, but one small issue I have is that the game brings these up prior to launching into the game itself and there is no in-game options menu. I feel this is a decently large oversight, and I hope the developers correct this in a later patch. It's surprising, really, to see such an attention to detail in literally everything else, only to nearly completely ignore a core facet as an in-game options menu. And as far as replayability goes, given the open-world nature of the game and the amount of random encounters coupled with side missions and exploratory factors, this game does have a good amount of replayability in addition to the huge amount of single playthrough content available. It has been reported that the single player campaign alone takes approximately 20 hours to complete, which means that with all the additional open world features incorporated, this game has far more value than most other games at its price point. 
So all in all, I found the game to be a ton of fun, and it is a game that I will continue to play for quite some time. Is it worth the $20? In my mind, it is without a doubt worth it. At the amount of content available and the overall quality, I would actually have been okay with a $30 price point instead of the $20 price that we were given. So this has been a brief first impression of Rebel Galaxy by Double Damage Games, and I do apologize for its brevity. I'm a bit out of practice when it comes to first impressions. I'll get back into the swing of things eventually, but I didn't want to artificially pad the video just for play length. As always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below, and don't forget to like and share this video. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.